Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdul Al Kamel, and today I will be showing you how to create a 13 month rolling calendar. So, um, how this idea came about? So, I received a comment three days ago from Brian Smithers. Uh, he suggested that I add a 13 month rolling calendar to the personal budget template. Now, I didn't know what he was talking about, okay? So, the first idea that came to my mind was that I need to sum the past 12 months without including the current month. Uh, turned out that wasn't the case, okay? Um, so, his idea is, uh, you know, is to show a rolling, you know, a 13 month rolling calendar, not the values that are rolling. So, basically, it is as you can see here, because we we managed finally to uh, apply it to the personal budget template on version 3.2, which will be releasing soon. And uh, so I would like first to thank Brian uh, for his suggestions, a very good suggestion actually. So uh, as you can see here, once you apply it, you will get a 13 month you know, calendar on your chart. And it will show you the current month uh, at the end here. And the beginning is going to be the same month last year. So you will always have, you know, a, uh, an idea of what the current month is comparing to the same month last year, basically. Okay. So to create your own 13 month rolling calendar, you need to understand a very important trick with the date function. The uh, trick goes like this. There's a function called date. The date function asks for the year. I'm going to put 2020 and ask for the month. We can use uh, April and for the day we can use uh, first. And once you hit OK, it will construct a date basically based on the values uh, you gave. Now, if uh, you go back in and instead of putting four for April, you put something that doesn't exist uh, like uh, 15. OK. So you would expect that the function will give an error, uh, but instead it's not going to give an error. It will keep going. So once it hit 12 months, uh, so that's December. It's going to be 1st of December 2020. And um, then it will zero the number of months, and it's going to go into next year. Okay. So you guessed it. Um, 2020 with the month 15 and uh, day uh, first day of the month is going to give you March 1st, 2021. So we're going to use this trick to our advantage. And uh, so the first thing you need to create is a table uh, and format it as a table from here uh, that has month and total sales because we're going to use this data set that you see here. Okay, so uh, the table should have 13 rows uh, for our 13 month rolling calendar, of course. Now, uh, what we need to have here, we need to have here April 2019 and at the end here we need to have April 2020 which is our current month here and we would like the rows to be automatically filled and change every month you know until we uh, reach April 2020 and also once we uh, you know hit May 2020 we need this table to change dynamically to May 2020, right? And uh, the first cell is going to show May 2019. Now, how can we do that? So we use the date function and uh, I'm going to go up to the formula bar here so we can see things clearly. So we're going to use the date function, as we said, and uh, the first day uh, cell, uh, the first cell there is going to use the, um, it's going to be last year, the same month last year. So we're going to use a uh, function called year and it's going to ask you for the serial number which is basically today's date so you use the today's function okay and uh, we're going to go back one year so we say minus one now for the month we're going to use the month for today also okay so that's the month for today and we're going to use one for the day and let's see what that gives us so that gives us basically um, April 1st, 2019, all the way for all uh, the cells. Now, we don't want that. We need this to change every month, right? So we need the month to change by one 
from one cell to the other. So how can you do that? We can do that by figuring out what is the relative row number for each cell from the row, uh, the header row here. Okay, so we use a function called draw. Um, so we go back in for the month. We're going to change the month here. We would like it to change dynamically. Okay. So we're going to say plus because we'd like to add more months every time. And we're going to figure out, okay, what's the row for the current row number for the current row that we are in. So that's going to be the function called row. And don't put anything between the parentheses, just keep it like that. So that's going to calculate the row number for the current row. And then subtract the row for the headers. So you can select the headers like that. And as you can see here, it will give you table two headers. My table is named table two until now. And this is what you get. And once you hit enter, you can see that the month changes dynamically, you know, based on the row number. But you also notice that uh, we're no longer starting from April, we're starting from May. Now, to fix that, you just go back in the month here and subtract another month just to keep the calculation correct. So as you can see here, now you have your own, your 13-month uh, rolling calendar. So from April 1st, 2019 to April 1st, 2020, which is our current month now. Okay, so that is not something uh, no, uh, usually desirable to use in a chart. So you need to um, reformat it to be, um, you know, easy on the eyes, basically. So you can use a text function. Um, so there's a function called text, uh, and that function is used to format, you know, numbers or dates, you know, in formula. Okay, so inside the formula, you can apply the format. So it's going to ask you for the value. We already have the value. And now between um, quotation marks, you can put the uh, format uh, of the text. And uh, that's intuitive enough. So it is 3M, for example, for the month. It's going to give you the short three letter uh, month. And for the year, just put two Y's there uh, to give you the year as two digits. And once you hit enter, you get something that is easy on the eyes and use it in a chart. So you go from April 19 to April 20, and that will change next month when we hit May. It's going to be from May 2019 to May 2020, and that will keep the, your chart dynamic. So let's see um, how we can create a um, chart uh, using this data. Now, uh, we're going to calculate the total for each month here from this data that we have. And this data is actually uh, very long. It's a bit, uh, yeah, large, 4,500 uh, rows. Okay, so we're going to use, uh, of course, to do that, we're going to use uh, some F. Okay, um, I'm going to just expand here to uh, make uh, the function readable. So we're going to add another row for our table here, which is going to be the month here. Okay, uh, so we're going to use the text function uh, similar to what we have done there. It's going to use the date key and uh, same format is going to be for the uh, month and year. So that will allow us to use a symbol uh, sum if function. All right, so we go back in, we use sum if function. So what we need to uh, filter is basically the month here column. This is what we're going to filter it. And uh, what's the um, filter value that we would like to use? We're going to use this value against this column that we have selected. Now, this sum range is a different uh, column, which is the total column here. And then once uh, we finish the function, we hit enter. As you can see, we get our total sales. Now, um, we can select all the uh, and just format it correctly. All right. Okay. So now you can create your chart based on the data that you have here. And a basic chart is going to be just, you know, um, a line chart. 
and you can maybe make um, yeah some markers there um, maybe you can expand it a little bit yeah and uh, maybe you can also uh, to make it um, we can start at uh, 600,000 so we can start at 600,000 just uh, so we can see the little changes okay and um, we can make uh, yeah all that that seems reasonable we can start also with uh, with 800,000 that doesn't matter that much okay so as you can see here now we can see uh, April 20 and we can see April uh, 2019 and we can see that we have made some improvement I mean compared to um, April uh, 2019 now I know you can make also um, a table that um, compares each month to the previous month or you can create another chart on top of this one to show you know the um, uh, the value of last year uh, but the this is when you would like to create just one chart a simple one and you would always would like to have an idea of what was the value um, of last year on the same month so this is how you create um, you can create your um, 13 month calendar I hope you guys find something useful in this and uh, you can use it in your own business so thank you so much for watching and hope to see you uh, next time on another video thank you so much